Don't let your hard drives die an agonizing and painful death. Seriously, don't let it happen. Dave, start the show now. Start. This episode of Geek Meet is brought to you by Blender.com. One of the things which is near and dear to our hearts is NAS storage. That's because we use a lot of it. We've got nearly 100 terabytes of storage here and we're about to add some more because we generate so many videos that we need space to house it. But GeekBeat is small time compared to Backblaze. The online backup provider has currently got around 28,000 drives deployed. And over the last couple of months, they've published some fantastic data about what they're seeing in terms of reliability. I've cross-referenced their findings with those from an old Google document, an equally old Carnegie Mellon, Mellon document, and I'm gonna tell you everything you really need to know. But I've also got links to all the research as well as recommended drives and NAS devices on the site at geekby.tv forward slash NAS drives. First of all, we're specifically talking about drives that are used in storage devices, not the ones in your computer. They're very different environments, mainly because the storage devices are powered on all the time and see a lot more frequent usage. You might think that since they're on all the time, let's get the energy efficient drives. But going green with your NAS disks is a bad idea. Backblaze completely abandoned green drives because their power up power down sequences were wearing them out very fast. And let's face it, you don't want drives with important information wearing out. So then paranoia might lend you to want to purchase enterprise grade drives. After all, they cost more and have a longer warranty. So why take the chances, right? Well, as it turns out, enterprise drives were failing at a rate of 4.6% annually, as opposed to consumer drives, which only fail at 4.2% of the time. So save your money. The next question that comes to mind is, okay, when do the drives fail? And now things really start to get interesting. According to Backblaze, 22% of their drives fail within four years. Now think about that for a minute. Where is all your data sitting right now? If it's on an old hard drive, and that's probably your only copy, you probably have about a one in four chance of it dying this year. Heck, even if you have an old NAS with dual drives configured in a mirrored array, there's still an unacceptably high chance of losing all of your data after three to four years. Before we get into recommendations, let's talk about brands because I was shocked to see that there was a huge amount of variability. By far, the Seagate drives were failing at a higher rate than Western Digital or Hitachi. On first glance, it's enough to make you want to shy away from the brand altogether. But should you really do that? We'll get to the recommendations in just a minute. Before we do, I want to take a second to tell you about the terabytes of learning you can get at lynda.com. These folks have created thousands of tutorials covering a huge range of subjects, and it's all available to you starting around 25 bucks a month. Want to bone up on your Photoshop skills? Thinking about learning the time-honored art of 3D animation? Go to lynda.com forward slash geekbeat and start your free seven-day trial right now. Then send me a tweet at John Pose. Tell me what you're learning. What the heck, maybe I'll watch it too. And hey, before you know it, you'll be creating terabytes of your own creative data, which reminds me, let's get digging into that NAS storage right after you visit lynda.com forward slash geekbeat. That's geekbeat at the end with lynda.com forward slash in front of it. Lynda with a Y, by the way. Okay, I'm done, with, done now. I mean, I said Y because my mom spells it with an I and you don't want to get mixed up. So there are so many different models, sizes, brands, and even ages of drives that I wanted to narrow down the results to see if we could stick to comparing models as closely as possible. So I chose the three terabyte drives Backblaze had deployed. They've got roughly 5,600 Hitachi drives with an average age of around 1.9 years old. Another 4,500 Seagate drives with an average age of around 1.5 years old and 350 Western Digital Reds, which average just at about a half a year old. Now the annual failure rate of the Western Digitals comes in at just over 3%, while the Hitachis are just under 1%. Meanwhile, the Seagates, 
have a staggering 10% annual failure rate. That Seagate number is just too big to ignore. I couldn't in good conscience recommend using a Seagate in any NAS device because even with redundancy, the odds of data loss are just too high. But in comparing the Hitachi and the Western Digital Red, the question is, does the price difference justify the additional 2% annual failure rate? Well, it depends. Let's say you've got a two drive NAS unit like my QNAP HS210 and you're gonna run it in a striped RAID array, meaning there's no redundancy. You're going to cram all of the space into one big drive to get as big of a partition as you can. Scary RAID. Yeah. I would only recommend Hitachi drives because of, regardless of price, if either of the drives fails, you lose all the data on both. But in the same NAS, if you were going to run them in a mirrored RAID, where both drives back one another up in case one fails, then the odds of losing them both at the same time is pretty slim for like the first three to four years. If there isn't much of a cost difference, go with the Hitachi. But for a big savings, the Western Digitals will do in a pinch. Personally, I don't like the odds of just going with the two drive NAS, so my strong recommendation is to get at least a four bay unit. This will allow you to run more redundant versions of RAID, spreading your data out across more drives and lowering the risk of any single drive failing. Here in our st studio, we tend to use eight drive storage arrays, which also provide for dual disk redundancy, meaning we could lose two drives simultaneously and still use the data in those machines. Of course, no matter what you do in a single given NAS, you always have the small chance that either the NAS itself will fail or multiple drive failures will get you. Or it could be stolen or damaged by a disaster. So really the only way to sleep at night is to maintain another backup NAS off-site and schedule frequent replication of the data. Certain devices, such as those from QNAP and Synology, have real-time remote replication built in and they can duplicate themselves to another unit across the internet or even to an Amazon Cloud instance. Well, I hope that helps answer a few questions for you guys. If you have any more, tweet them at me, at John Pose, and if I can't answer them, I'll get an expert to do it for us. Thumbs up on YouTube, and I'll see you guys next time.